best Macca's burgers ever. Welcome back to the LCS. It's an exciting time to be alive. Jake Spawn Tiberi. Hello. I'm excited for this. I actually, so the people at home, this is, I, I hope this surprises a lot of people. Yep. I have panic attacks from mess. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you this have panic is attacks wild. From everything. Come no, on. but like, I, I, I remember I, I used to live with uh, Loser Fruit and Atlas in uh, Lidcom. Yeah. And I remember one day I came home to a Mechie kitchen mm -hmm. and like I full freaked out. I was like sitting in the corner, like huddling, crying. Yeah. And like, this, this is massively right now, triggering. <laughs> it's actually. <laughs> Freaking me out. It's pretty gross because it just, it's just dirty. before just before uh, we came back, you went, I don't have any bowls. And he and I were like, What are you nah, talking I about? There's bowls right here. Bowls. And you and you gave me a look that was unlike a look that you often give me. You were like, I'm not kidding around on this one. Yeah, I'm uh, really not. Because like I, I actually have two meals prepared that I reckon I can get done. Uh, but definitely not with this shit going on, so I need to... But the, the flip side of that is that I'm only calmed down by you being in a panic state. Okay. So, you know, in That's terms great, of so I need a bowl. To balance. So what I'm gonna do is I'm... You just take the middle of the... Oop, is my... Yeah, microphone, microphone did that thing again. Hang on, hold this. <laughs> Hang on, I'll get him. Um, uh, okay, so Jake, talk us through what you're... I feel like I'm getting my head down. Oh, there's shit in this bowl as well. I, I actually... Hey, give it here, give it here. Someone give it needs here. to give, give me a bowl. bowl. Give me the bowl. Lick the bowl. it clean. Oh. Can I throw this on that plate there? Yeah. <laughs> They're complaining. No, well, like, what I want to do is I actually want to make some uh, fried rice. Because I think, like, I'm oh, made, right? Oh, legit. Okay, yeah. so, so what, what have we got? Do we need like, rice? So this is 90 seconds. Yep. But I also have some frozen vegetables here. Well, so uh, debatable, because they were frozen vegetables. That is not a clean bowl. They've been sitting out. What are you talking about? I spat it and I wiped it and everything. Okay, <laughs> so put that in for, like, 45 seconds. In in the what? Uh, in the microwave. Oh, and then these kind of are already half the frosted anyway. Hey. I make fried rice, by the way. <laughs> Your laptop's in Hey, it. Nick, can you move the, yeah, the MacBook? Right, thanks. <laughs> Shut up, this is a cooking show now. Can I? Um, <laughs> wait, so I make fried rice, like, probably, you know, every, every so often, like... What's that banging noise? Um, the reason I do is because it's a really good meal, Hingers, when you don't actually have a meal. Oh. Most people have, like, white or brown rice in their sure. uh, cupboard. And then, like, whatever... <laughs> Whatever leftovers you have available, you can make into fried rice. So what we've got here is obviously we've got some frozen vegetables that are now unfrozen because they've been out for too long and some probably going to kill vegetables. Benji. Yep, so we've got some vegetables. I'm just yeah. going to season that a bit. Obviously, yeah, that's very you can important. Season, uh, yep. And then we're going to get some bacon because, like, no, I'm actually making a serious meal. You're <laughs> killing me. All right, so we're going to start again. <laughs> I didn't realize that my favorite segment of the OPL is. Making Jake genuinely angry, and now I know. Uh, okay, so, here you go. This, do you want me to clean it again? No. <laughs> Nick, wait, that, was, that was have, 30 seconds, by the way. You You're have, a bad Not man. 90 seconds. You have a child. Oh, I didn't say used 90 to seconds. seconds. He said 45 seconds. Yeah, I said 45 seconds. Well, even and then, gave it 30 it seconds is still You're undercooking the undercooked rice. No, like, because what we're going to do is we're going to mix eat it this. together. Oh, God, Be okay. quiet, Benji. I'm not going to poison you. It's warmish. Um, it's okay. <laughs> I, Your Honor, I said I wasn't going to poison him. So, I said it on camera. Yeah. <laughs> now what we're going to do is yep. you're going to dice this up. Okay. I hope uh, you clean like your hands. Small? A dice. <laughs> well, dice are big depending on what game you're playing. Just give me like a little bit do of like, bacon. I reckon like a D20 size is what yeah, you kind of okay, want to cool. look for. Yeah. So then what we're going to get is we're going to get some rice. And so what you would normally do is you would normally par cook... Actually... Old rice is the best for fried rice. Old you rice. already have you cooked mean rice. Cooked already. Cooked and right. then put in the uh, fridge. Because what the fridge does is it removes all the moisture from it. Yeah, right. Which is why if you don't wrap food. What's your favorite favorite rice type? Uh, 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 jasmine? Jasmine? What do you... Uh, I, Jay? I eat like brown rice. Brown? But yeah. I prefer uh, like long grain rice. Um, you? So, uh, I'll eat anything, dude. I, I'm not picky. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm you're a vegan. very, you're I a vegan. Get, I you're incredibly picky. We get the bacon in there <laughs> as well. We get the bacon in there as well. I'm picky in the and macro we give it a stir. Wait, so sense. you don't want me to cook this bacon individually? No. You sure? Just, yeah, throw it in. All right. Bacon, most of the time... Just for this camera? Yeah. Pre-smoked? It's pre-smoked, so it's already cooked. Yeah. yeah. So most of the time you eat bacon out of the packet. Can you, you don't stop know. handling Can that bacon yeah. with your fingers? I'm just making sure you have really properly. It's so upset. That's what we're going to do. So we're going to do that, and then you're going to put it in. I reckon that could use another minute. Uh, at the same time, we're going to crack some eggs because Bryce is a Neanderthal and he's like, what is... This is filth. I was um, tasked with cooking a meal 
not cleaning up after That's a meal. That's true. Um, thank I, God. I, yeah. So You're we're going to get some water in here. Do you reckon with an egg? Yeah. Do you reckon there's any air inside an egg? No, hang on. I'm holding eggs. No, hang open. On. Give me open. the egg. Hang on. Hold the eggs. Open. Oh. Dangerous. You go to gym oh. now. Is it, is it a, oh, that's because it's wet on the Dangerous. Dangerously yeah, close to, to the camera. Give it to the Eggman. <laughs> oh, that's crackling. There is that go. right? Cool. Oh, that's my computer. <laughs> no, so we're going to clean out fine, this bowl. Guys. Shout out to M-Wave. He's going to need to get uh, Nick a new computer now. For sure. Because he's uh, sure. microwaved his current one. And what we're going to get is we're just going to get one egg. Have you got an egg for me? Do I? So crack an egg. Can we get a, the camera down here? Is it Always crack an egg on a flat surface. Never crack it on the edge of something. Because otherwise you get eggshell in, and just one-handed, you're gonna get rid of that. And By the way, you have eight like, minutes, you so think, you are killing this. Do you think? Do you think we might need to come up with I, a second deal? See, the comedic, the, the sort, of, sort of the comedic premise of this yep. is that, like, we don't we're know what no we're doing with this, bad, and but what, he's actually giving what, a cooking lesson. Yeah, he's, I mean, it's a bit of a tryhard move, but also, you know, <laughs> it, it, it means it means also that Beach probably isn't going to get poisoned by this. Out and of everyone in this room, he talks about Maggie Beer more than the rest of us. Absolutely, I love Maggie Beer. Uh, <laughs> How long is that going for? Uh, so, you've, uh, whatever time you told me, it's now done. Okay, cool. So, bring that out. <laughs> yeah, and I reckon throw that in. Classic for coward move. 45 seconds. In, in, like, the, in the bowl. Yes, in the bowl. In that's, the bowl. Does it need See, anything else? No, absolutely not. Wait, wait, when so, that's going to be the omelette. So, generally, There's the way, you, yeah, oh, so generally the way yeah, you make an omelette in fried rice, like, give it 30 seconds and we'll keep looking at it. 30 seconds? Uh, yeah. So, generally, the way you make an omelette is you'll cook your fried rice and then you'll put the rice to the sides, make a well in the middle. And then you just put the egg in there. Oh, yeah. And then you just beat it. Use and then the you slowly to... yeah, add okay. it into the fried okay. rice. Because you don't want really overcooked rubbery eggs. No, that would no. be horrible. So that looks pretty good so That'd far. That'd be the worst. I that think. would be. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to leave that there. Uh, I'm worried about how raw that bacon is. Well, Try I mean, it's technique. smoked. Surely it's smoked. It'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, the... yeah. No, I mean, yeah. I'm not eating it. I mean, so I don't fine. have a frying pan, so I can't Naturally wood smoked. I imagine the bigger problem with the bacon is that it's been sitting on this desk for about three hours without being refrigerated. Can you like? Can you bring it out? My God, yes, sir. Um, oh, just a little bit more. That Give is it an omelet. extra like fifteen seconds. So this is actually the way some Americans make uh, scrambled eggs. What well, they would do with that they're is they would whip there. it up. Sorry, it's true. They would whip it up a little bit. Yeah, and then they would put it back in there. Then it becomes like kind of scrambledy. That's a, a lot of the time when you get eggs or scrambled eggs on airplanes. It's done in microwaves. Can I t uh, can I say something really honestly to you yeah. right now? I've never seen you happier. <laughs> yeah, I, I love cooking. Can you stop that? That's overcooking. <laughs> <laughs> Cool, so Look that's going to that. be our omelette. So what Holy you're going to do is you're going to then slide that out. Okay, what do you want me to do with and it? And you're just going to dice it. Little strips. How big? Uh, same as the bacon. Okay. Oh, that's hot. Yeah, of course Ooh. it's hot. It's been in the microwave. I'm just filling time. I'm doing the like TV cooking thing. Do we like, have a uh, do we have a time count on this? How much longer we got? To film this? Can we actually go back to talking about League of Legends, like our job? If I get this done quicker. Do you have anything to say? Uh, I, I could always talk about League. I think that's kind of what they pay us for. Yes, uh, but, but, but <laughs> not in my contract. I, I will say that when you talk about League, Jake, what happens is sort of the, the veins on your neck pop out. Oh uh, yeah, I die get, inside you, a little bit. You get, you I get, think that's not. I don't want to. I don't, don't want the extra. I don't want to muck up the ratio. Benji, do you want this? <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna hey, say, you can have that, Nick boy. I'm happy with. Why don't, don't you try it out for me? I don't I really think... like eggs. No, that's okay. You try. It. You've cut the way it up. It works is though that like uh, Beej had to eat Egypt's food, so now Egypt should have to eat Jake's food. No, I, I want that's... that food. That looks good. <laughs> that's a rotation. Uh, you know, a little I'll bit of salt. I'll eat this. A little bit of pepper. <laughs> I'm stuck on one of Bryce's. Th there is like this thing about when Bryce was cooking, the room smelled like raw egg. <laughs> Now the room smells good. I, I cooked it. I actually look like I mean, he's cooked I'm actually going to say, like, as far as microwave food goes, you it's, can do this at home. Absolutely. That's a pretty good fried rice. Like, that's a well-balanced meal. I the meal is good. The ingredients just suck. Okay, yeah. so let's go with another one, because we have time, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. Okay, cool. I need another bowl. Can a producer get me a bowl? Great. Uh, get the man a bowl. Is this actually just butter? It's basically a bowl. There you go. Is that just butter? It's yeah. literally just cool. butter. Can you reheat that for me? Just give it an extra 15 seconds. So this Don't is put both cheese. of them in there. Oh, I thought, oh, is it's it this finished. Going in? Uh, no, that's done. Don't this ruin done. the meal. That is a finished product right there. That is Jake Tiberi's fried rice. Bryce, you want to come get this? Put it over there. Yeah, fried yeah, rice. Sure, sure. Um, so that's a good meal. Uh, macaroni and cheese. Oh. A personal favorite of mine. Yep. Can we dice up another piece of bacon? Please. It's the... Uh, don't you, surely you need water to cook the macaroni and cheese. Well, that's in what this we've got. We've got water. Right there. Oh, I just yeah. Right. He so prepared all this. You My need God. A little bit of butter, which has just been done, and I assume that's thirty seconds. Nick, can I have the butter, please? <laughs> cool. Do you Nick, want to, can you, you want add to that butter? A little yeah, a little bit of milk. All right. 
Now, look, personally, I don't drink milk because it makes me shit myself. But I will put a little bit of that in here yeah. to see the purposes of your cooking. See, no, to no, me, on, all I on. heard you say then yep, was quality enough. OPL content. And then another little bit of drink water. Drink the milk. <laughs> um, hey, guys, welcome back to the OPL. He's going to drink a litre of milk and then shit himself on camera. I don't want to do this. See, this he gets a cheese for it. Hey, Jake, there's some, there's some balls on your left, mate. <laughs> oh, thank you. Richard and then Twitch like chat just be like, hey man, I tuned into this for League of Legends content, not to watch some Asian man shit himself <laughs> after drinking milk, guys. Come on. Thank you me. watch it. In Worlds 2020, they're going to have someone else. Clement, Clement is going to be drinking milk and shit himself. And the producer's telling us not to. Okay, well, I'll move on. Uh, Welcome back. <laughs> um, I only get to do this show twice a year now. now. <laughs> uh, no, not yet. Okay. No, I don't think. Uh, where should I put it? Because I'm the now just holding bacon. On the chopping board is fine. All right. Yeah. Look. How are you going to cook the macaroni? Uh, I'm going to cook it in the microwave. The mystery will resolve. Hey, uh, can we get a? Well, it's got some milk in there. Can so we get I a review? Okay. Adrian, what can do you, you think of the? Can you actually throw me a spoon? Can you? Uh, but from oh. behind you, I, I'll you catch it. Can you just put that in? Yep. I just don't I think reckon you will. a minute. Now. I will. I will. I don't trust Benji. <laughs> Okay, he's done it. Great job. Um, Ethan, when you eat Starburst, actually put them in your mouth and on my feet. It's incredible <laughs> that I was able to throw that spoon through the multi-room setup we've got here. <laughs> yeah. At the right. No, we used the portal. That was a great yeah. throw, if I don't say so by healthy. The <laughs> fact that it <laughs> went through three different corridors and turned Incredible. right angle. It was like that Angelina Jolie movie. Yeah. <laughs> we have referenced that movie on this broadcast like six times and times. nobody knows the name of it. Yeah. Just, it's it, called... Entrapment? No, no, no. It's a no. single word. It's called um. Is bullet. it wanted? No, no wanted. Ah, thank you very much. How Benji. is it? Am I eating this? All right, let's okay, go. Can you eat a little? I was sure it's called entrapment. Mm. Catherine Zeta Jones is incredible. Right, the veggies suck, Wait. but it's edible. No, I've. What are, are the veggies too cold, or are they just frozen vegetables? Do you want me to heat it up? Like frozen, frozen vegetables. Oh, throw, yeah. throw me the bowl. <laughs> I'll <laughs> heat it up. I want to. Yeah, oh, yeah, sure, that'll work. Uh, hey, how, how old were you when you realised that Catherine Zeta-Jones and Angelina Jolie were two different people? Because you were 34. 34 years old when that happened to me. It's missing sauce. That's what's missing. <laughs> missing what? Sauce? Sauce. Yeah, it could use some soy sauce. Can oh, I, I thought we that? had tomato sauce. So here, have a sweet potato. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have a look at that? <laughs> There's something spot. Oh, wait, no, never mind. Pepper? That's got a big cheese? chunk of pepper. No, no, this is still too hard. Macaroni and cheese? Yeah, it's gonna... too hard to put the cheese in yet. Okay. This I'll just unwrap the cheese to be minute. helpful. Yep. Yeah, Maybe one more minute. Up. I think we've, we're so probably we're sitting at about cheese. 90 seconds, so oh. a minute seems perfect. Okay. Because what we're going to do is we're going to heat it up again. Yep. Then we're going to put the bacon through and the cheese, and we're going to heat it up for another 30 seconds. We're going to hope that the pasta is cooked. Uh, <laughs> are we? Or are we just going to serve it up regardless? No, we're going to hope it's cooked. Look, oh, I, sure. I definitely, I'm about raw pasta. Like oh, just yeah. eating a big thing of spaghetti. Yeah. Like as like a, yeah, that's But so that's far, I feel like, I'm pretty confident this is two meals that you could do with a single pan. I was expecting this to go much worse. And I am so happy that I have made you happy uh, with this segment. This I is really, fantastic. I mean, I think that... You well, use gym. Yes. I use cooking. Oh, to like mental health kind of like, yeah, I need to calm down. Yeah, need to, yeah right. Mm. Well, I was going to say that don't worry because in the third rotation of this, I'm going to be making dessert. And I, I mean, look, who knows? I mean, th this whole building could go up. This whole. <laughs> and also, but, there is no bowl that doesn't currently have an entree or a main in no, it. There's not oh, there. no, we got a bunch more. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say. I've been told by the producers. Yep. You've got 45 seconds. Oh my god, <laughs> can I just say, the production team, you are so boring. Yeah. Cool. Oh, that's now bubbling. Yeah, it's boiling. Careful of your um, phalanges. As, a, as an Italian man, Jake, yep. would you mind leaning into that a bit and giving it a bit of Mamma Mia, or is mm. that offensive? Oh, molto bene. Yay! Yay. Love it. Love it. Um, can you now Jeez? put, yeah, uh, not all of it. Is this I'll... unwrapped? Yeah, yeah no, I did it. I pre-unwrapped it. Can you cut it up a little bit, or just rip it up? Yep. So put some of that in. We're going to give it a good stir as well. It's like crumbled feta, but in this instance, it's sort of like fingered craft singles. <laughs> craft fingles. <laughs> and then, so if nothing gonna... else comes up tonight, we had craft fingles. <laughs> hey guys, uh, I can't wait to do this show again in oh, 2020. God, <laughs> I can't believe I get paid $25,000 an episode to do this. Sorry, what? Um, huh? <laughs> uh, Am I putting it back in? Yeah. Just to finish it off? It's a little bit hard. So oh no, we're being thrown up to oh, a graphic. No. You guys are getting cut off. Oh, I, I, I have to insist. The bacon, chat, the bacon, chat. bacon, Quick, bacon, bowl. Hang on. Take we're the spoon there. out of the bowl. I'm, I'm not putting it in the microwave just <laughs> no, yet. No, put it in. Oh my goodness. <laughs> no! Oh, oh, that's the microwave. My masterpiece. Oh, that right. was actually turning into what resembled mac and cheese. It's fine. Did you see that? It's mac and cheese. It was mac and cheesy. <laughs> 
It's oh. mac and cheese. It just has a small. <laughs> it just has a small bowl of sweet potato in it. I now. hate you. I hate you so oh. much. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> it counts to nine. <laughs> That's nine. What even count that? <laughs> Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> Me. I don't know how to follow what that, Bryce. No, say? look, Rune come back, camera, sucks. come back. No, it's not coming. You gotta come to us, dude. Stay away. Yeah, let me All right, as Jake finishes that up, we're gonna jump into champs oh. like this next game. Legacy versus Mammoth, the un only undefeated team left in the in the uh, league. Bryce versus Legacy. Yeah, and uh, Legacy coming off a bit of a stompy game from yesterday. Uh, this is definitely yeah. a hard task. But that was just that game yesterday. Needing to was bounce just back. Papyrus early on fell behind. Oh, we've, we've been okay. served out. You want to show that to the camera, Bryce, before? It actually oh. doesn't look too bad. It looks like I, I feel like it's going to be very it looks crunchy. It looks very crunchy. All right, Benji, take us through a meeting. I'm going to take us through the champs like while Bryce enjoys his meal. We're going to have the bands coming out for Legacy. They've taken you, uh, Nico. I get that confused. They've actually taken Yumi off as well, as well as Silas. On the other side, we see Rise and Aatrox being taken out of Paparaz's pool and Sejuani out of Guts's. Very big Sejuani player. Let's yeah. have a look at the first picks and bands. What's still up, Bryce? What catches your eye? Well, I mean, first of all, I just want to say I wish we could ban mac and cheese just kind of as a meal. Give it, what was it I'm like? Not a fan. Was it crunchy? It, like, it was crunchy. Okay. Is it meant to be crunchy? I've never no. had mac and cheese. It's supposed to be soft. Okay, then it's a bad time. Okay. Um, but anyway, to track on in with the draft, yeah, the bands have come through. Aatrox gone. Aurelia and Akali still open. Yumi has hit the bench. And uh, Legacy have a couple of Akali players. Chaz, definitely big proponent of that one. So first pick for them. Does make a lot of sense here for the blue side. Bunch of deliberation on the other side of the coin, though. King getting active. Absolutely. So uh, that Akali gone. There's still some some picks up. Aurelia being one of them. We've been talking about that a little bit today. Yep. And how it's fallen through draft. It looks like that Mammoth are not letting that one fall at all. First picking that one away for one of their solo laners. Yeah, and once again, it is going to be Fudge up in the top side for Mammoth. They do have Topoon on the roster as well, but it is going to be the young blood stepping out onto the rift. Sona is someone that has... I don't know the exact number, but a fairly high presence in the OPL so far. Interested to see where this one does sort of end up. Because it is the first rotation on red side, they can ultimately take a uh, Sona Tarek lane yeah. if Legacy chooses to not take well, it away. They can pick it away now. We've yeah. seen a team do that already this weekend. We'll see if it happens again. It's a big choice for it, Legacy it, because it, Tarek is not really a great support. It was Legacy yesterday. Oh, was uh, it? Okay. To pick that one up in the hands of Crazy. So he's done it before, but this time it is going to be the Zyra Khan, so... Maybe they look at this matchup and it's like, hmm, it could be like the Sona AD carry with any old support and more of a standard lane. It could be the Sona Tarek duo and then you're fighting off against the lovers there. So they there want that is. early power to kind of bully because that's what Sona Tarek do. They just sit back, they heal, they do nothing. And then they become incredibly, incredibly annoying to deal with later. And Zyra Khan, certainly one of the best level ones. And once you hit that level six mark, can make stuff happen. Absolutely. So to take that Tarek away, locking down that bot lane for Mana. So both bot lanes are missing. What are we looking at right now? We've got both junglers open, and we've also got a solo lane open for both teams. So ban-wise, uh, anything you ban away from your opponents, you're kind of also catching yourself as well. We see Mammoth taking Elise off the board. Yeah. The champion we have seen Guts play. Mm -hmm. Certainly has played it before in the OPL this year, but jungle bans kind of going to hit on both teams, right? So yes, maybe Babip looks at it and he's not going to be a big Elise player, wants to take away that from Guts, but... Both of these teams electing to pick almost exactly the same sort of thing in terms of roles, right? It is a single solo lane, or it is the complete bottom lane. So whatever they do ban away, they ultimately do kind of deny themselves. LeBlanc ban is interesting, given mm -hmm. what we have already seen. There's the potential to be a bunch of assassins all over the solo lanes. That's one we did see yesterday as well, though. Yep. So uh, that one being taken away. Then we'll see what uh, Mammoth respond with here. They've hit the jungle pool twice so far with Sejuani Elise. Do you hit a third time and catch Guts out? They do get the first pick in this next phase. Yeah. So potentially look at the jungle pick and give you a solo lane or a pick away. So. Yeah, I suspect that will be the case. It's going to be like a jungle blind for Babip, and then yes, he's going to get countered, but counter picks aren't too bad right now, I expect. And can I just say, it's very difficult to cast a game of League of Legends with chunky bits of pasta in your throat. That is currently my predicament. This do you have water? Yeah, I do. I'm kind okay. of chugging it every time I stop speaking, but this is, a, this is something we didn't think through. There's going to be the last ban, very high priority in the Olaf, huge tempo jungler, get things rolling early with lanes like an Aurelia can be very problematic to deal with, so, yeah, so Legacy banning that one away. Three junglers taken off the board here, which makes sense because you kind of can hit solo laners, but which lane do you hit? Because both Akali and Aurelia were seen in both lanes. 
Although I'd imagine both of those probably looking at the top side from what I know. And but then you take that with a grain of salt. Rek'Sai yeah. taken for Babip. There we go. Very actually good user of Tarek's abilities. You buy into the Rek'Sai and he has a lot of reach in and of him, or I guess herself, mm. uh, with the Burrow and the ulti, but... Gank paths are unique. When you add the extra distance of a Tarek Dazzle, then certainly a bottom lane like the Zyra Khan can become the victim to some stuff they don't want happening down there. So very standard lock-in for Babbit, but it definitely does synergize well with the rest of their comp. That is going to be another lock-in. That is the Camille. Bruiser. That is uh, potentially being played in one of the soil laners as well. Yeah. Jungle Camille not really as popular recently, but uh, Jungle... Ooh. Nocturne, that's a bit of our left field. We haven't seen that one yet. Yeah, okay. So into the Rek'Sai, and uh, Guts is going to pick that one up for himself. Insta-lock. Okay, yeah. Interesting Insta stuff Cassia. already. Because uh, you take a look at Legacy's comp, right? Yeah. And it's like Akali, Nocturne, Camille, Rakan. They are all going to be diving the backline. And when you look at Mammoth, and it is kind of the story of Sona and Tarek as a duo, right? If they, if they have time to land their heals and their shields and keep people up in the long haul, you win every fight. And what do you need to counteract that? You need the instant damage, you need the instant engage, and this is going to be a layering of Camille going in, Hextech Ultimatum locking people down. You have Guts with the Paranoia, crazy dashing to people and going on the backline. This is so many engage tools here picked up for Legacy. Tracking into this one, and the last pick response here in the hands of Triple is the list, right? So this is going to be an interesting matchup. We haven't yet seen in the OPL this split in the mid lane, but stylistically, if you have an entire composition diving on top of you, no better champion than Alessandro. Absolutely. Looking at this comp, one thing stands out for me from Emma's side, and that is Fudge on Aurelia is going to be a very important in this game. His team, uh, you know, with the Sona Tarek in the bot lane, that's two supports. They do do damage, but he's the one that's really going to be racking up kills in this fight. And as a new player, as a rookie this season, this is a lot of pressure on him on this big roster that's currently 3-0. Yeah, but I already think he stepped up to the plate, right? Like, the performances so far have been uh, very, very good by a lot of people's standards there. So, certainly came out with a big swing, making it work so far. Once again, to hit on it, Mammoth trying to keep the undefeated season dream alive. Legacy bouncing back off. An absolute shocker on the top side. Pat Prize and Guts were all out of sorts. Uh, not a lot of synergy there between them yesterday, but this is a comp that... Everybody needs to be working together. Absolutely. Everybody needs to be diving at the same time. Well, after the McDonald's champion selects, we are onto the rift here for game three of the night. Keep in mind that after game four, we're going to be having NPL tonight. So if you want to play some ARMs with us, hang around. That'll be up later on. You'll be able to join in, play against Tingers and us, of course. For now, we're going to be watching Mammoth vs. Legacy. Five-point defense coming out for both teams. Well, actually, Legacy Almost. leaving bottom open. Oh, no, that's they're, they're there. It's the mid lane here that got two stacked up. Yeah, King is going to rotate, trying to look for a cheeky little uh, Q auto attack potentially in the mid lane. It isn't going to be the Klepto Sona. Actually has gone for the unsealed spell book, so we'll be able to take different summoners as this game tracks onwards, be able to swap out the TP for more combat-oriented stuff. And maybe when you take a look at the enemy, right? You have an Akali, you have a Camille, and a Nocturne. And there is kind of nothing you can do as a Sona against oh no. that sort of stuff. Oh no, they're dived in. King's caught out. Sona level 1 does not have much health. He's going to walk away. He avoids the CC. Destiny going to run into turret as well. And already, yeah. Legacy going to get a big advantage in this bot lane. Yeah, big advantage to Legacy. But Destiny really did save the day there. Pops the E and stuns Praetith. The follow-up could not be there onto the Sona. King, what, 400-ish HP level 1? If uh, the auto attacks were kind of flying free and fast there, that would have been first blood, potentially a flash over the wall, but is saved somewhat. They do have extra potions given the double support item start and a lot more of sustain, but nonetheless, Praetith and uh, Crazy starting this lane off with an advantage. Yeah, they have got sustain with uh, Sona, obviously, but it takes a few levels to you can really start popping that off. If you spam your abilities too early, you run out of mana, and then you're useless. Yeah. Really is a war of attrition down here. On the sides as well, junglers are going to start on opposite sides of the map, so maybe not be seeing too many interactions between them so far, but you can see uh, kind of different priorities. That was a very nice stun. An auto attack, cheeky little trade. It's not often you see those land, but you know, Fudge really reading where Paparais is going to be there. After yesterday, Paparais is going to want to have a better performance. The game early on for him was a complete disaster. He kind of got left to the walls a little bit, but he really got shattered of that game yesterday. And uh, Legacy uh, didn't really have much of a chance after that, no matter how the other lanes went.
Yeah, very nice uh, push in from the bottom side for Legacy, though. Was spotted out by the ward, but you have that lane priority. There's Ayer Rakan, you get the early push walking into Mammoth's jungle. Ward on the blue buff, and it doesn't really give them any information yet, but they'll know that Babip isn't pass passing there eventually. This ward will just spot him, though, so maybe a little bit futile in the end. Kind of sticking his nose into the top side, looking for something. Yep. Eyes on the Scuttle Crab right now, but Guts did just cancel a recall. Okay, no, he's kind of just stutter stepping, thinking about doing his Gromp, maybe thinking about contesting something in the river, but lanes in the positions they are now definitely would be a difficult fight to take. Yeah, these junglers are doing back and forth on the top side here. Might see something going on there in a second as the crab spawns, but no, it's going to take creeps each. That top lane gank was spotted out, so Vaporize playing a bit safer than yesterday. He's also got the easier lane in the top side today. Yesterday he was on the flip side, and you've got a lot of ways to get around behind, but on this side it's very difficult to get behind you. Yeah, certainly is it is. And it's interesting to kind of contrast these two different compositions. You have an early mid jungle 2v2 uh, from Mammoth, the Rek'Sai, side the list. They can make things happen. If the list gets priority, which he has had for the entirety of this game against a melee Camille, uh, you kind of expect it's a lot of the onus for Mammoth is to make things happen with triple. Whether they go bot side and look to relieve some of the pressure of the Zyra Khan, that's an option. Whether they go top side and look to kind of pick on Papfry's on the other side of the coin, you really are kind of waiting for those level 6 marks. You want the Hextech ultimatum of the Camille. You want to get Guts to his level of ulti, and then he really can impact the map. And as I was saying in Champ Select, when you can layer that with a Rakan, the Camille, the Nocturne, you have options to swing wide open when they hit that level 6 mark. This is oh, a trade, though. Chaz jumping in, though. Just gets a stun down. Not going to follow it up. A little bit of damage coming back from Triple. He's a bit yeah. low on mana, but he's still putting the, the screws in on Chaz. And actually very nicely played. Waits out the magic damage shield and just kind of hovered in range of the W. So lands the CC, oh. gets the trade afterwards. Crazy. It's caught, the knockoff. Caught Tarek, not the one you want to hit there. The Sonas to squish your target in that scenario. I mean, they're just looking for trading. He yeah. ease the creeps. And that's kind of League of Legends, right? Somebody uses an ability and all of a sudden you have a window to abuse. You like to see people taking those opportunities, right? It's Oh, Sona oh. caught. Actually, stun going down on him. He's going to turn around the other way, in fact, very quickly. King low on mana, though. And that was it. That was demonstrated exactly what I'm saying. Like, he has no stun. I can look for a knock-up. We get a good trade. We walk away. All of a sudden, Tarek's done back up on available. Crazy does exactly the same thing. Cops it in the face. That's a Q power core. The passive comes through and uh, trade definitely not in his favor. Two sides of the coin. Yeah, bot lane just resetting there. King going back and then teleporting back to lane. So getting his mana pull back, that'll keep going back and forward there. They'll keep that sustain going as they all reset there. Very slow game so far, but that's kind of how these junglers work. Nocturne before six. Doesn't have the best ganks in the world. Not useless though, of course. And uh, Rek'Sai as well is sort of relegated to running around getting farms. So. Yeah. Right now we're CSing, uh, which means not many teams are going to get big advantages. Well, Sweepy does come out though. Is he going to be spotted on the ward in the topside river? I expect not. And Chaz is actually going to face check. Oh, he's caught. Ooh. He's off dumb as well. Triple catches him out. CC going down. All goes out. Flash out as well. The bip will not get him, unfortunately for okay. him. But that's a flash popped as well as the ult for Chaz. Yeah, ends up just being the flash for flash trade there. But opportunity slightly missed. Uh, you think by Mammoth, they definitely would have been wanting to lock down first blood with a big use of cooldowns. Yep, it's going to be a level 6 to level 5, though. Papfry's in trouble. Badge. Oh, wow, he has to flash over the wall here. Fudge going into turret. First blood, solo kill top. Papfry's not having the best weekend. Yeah, Fudge just ticking off names there. Aurelia versus the Akali. Hits that level 6 mark and immediately goes aggressive. His jungler was on top side and just straight up looks for it. Guts is going to gank into the top side, though. Fudge. Fudge is caught out. He's been CC'd, in fact. Here comes Babip, though. Flash Ooh. knock up is there. He's turning it around. Fudge looking for damage. Oh. Flash over the wall. They both get out. Okay, so it is going to be all of the flashes burnt top side of the map for absolutely everyone. We'll just be able to TP back to lane as did his counterpart in Fudge, but things kind of heating up as we hit that level six mark. And yeah, advantage though for Aurelia yeah. over Akali. That's that's 13 oh, CS. Yeah. That's a kill. That's going to be an item there for him. It's, he's going to be an advantage for sure. Put himself the phage. Wants to start building towards that Triforce. Picks himself up the brown bag to kind of uh, skirt around this game a little bit more, but. In terms of the fights we've had, uh, the hookshot was actually cancelled in the mid lane by Triple, right? He waited with his flash to be able to deny the escape from Chaz. It ended up being a level 5 Rek'Sai. If he had the ulti, if Babip was like another camp up, then that could have been locked down. Unfortunately, it wasn't the case, but Fudge is being able to pull his own weight on the top side here. Yeah, Prize, well, though, caught out. Prize is here jumping in. Does claw himself under the turret, though, to get away. 
Now, what I'm looking at here is, is Guts, right? Babips hit six, he's got pressure. Guts is going to hit six shortly. He's going to get his first ultimate of the game. What kind of play can they make with this ultimate? This is big for Legacy. If they can get a big play, they can get a lane advantage, they can use that to get going in this game. Yeah, and the easiest one is bot lane, right? If you can get onto King, uh, then... Very easy target. Destiny kind of has to preempt the play there, and the ball is really in Legacy's court. You can see already it's the TP swapped over to the barrier for the Soda. King knows he is the target in this game, reads the play, and kind of sitting back as defensively as possible. But you do kind of judge these champions in the Nocturne, in the Galio, stuff like that, there, about their ability to hit that level 6 mark and then make it happen. Mm. Uh, win rates do kind of plummet in a general sense overall. When you take a look at Nocturne games, like, First gank is unsuccessful, and it's much harder to make the second one work when you take into account the runes, presence of mind, uh, when you do have the lethal tempo, stuff like yep. that. The cooldown reduction off your ulti is super important there. This is a sneaky ocean dragon being taken away. Great early game Drake to take. Guts obviously still has his ultimate, can still make plays, but getting this dragon whilst uh, Rek'Sai is off the map is a nice play for Legacy. They're going to get a nice little thing back in this game. Ocean dragon is going to spawn next as well. Maybe not so great there, but still. Some regen is going to help all of these lanes out. Because, I mean, like, the lead is negligible. It's 300 gold on a team-wide sense. Fudge, of course, does have the upper hand up here. And Paprise is in a little bit of a predicament right now. The wave pushing into his enemy top laner. This could be a fight. Oh, stun barely just misses there. That stun connects. You've got to wonder if the ultimate yeah. follows up there and he falls down. That's a very close play there. Okay, blue buff stolen away here by Babbit. Very cheeky play. Had the audio cue of the dragon and knows exactly where Guts is on the map. Rushes top side out of base. Takes away the, away the blue buff. So Chaz is not going to have that for himself. And whilst that is all happening, you see Paprise now just stepping back up to his turret. Afraid of there being a Rek'Sai in behind him. The Aurelia did just get a very nice trade. Had the Conqueror stacked and ready to rumble there. So opportunities looked at by Mammoth once again. Not willing to kind of dive too deep against a Nocturne. Very easy punish and doesn't even need to be close. The pink ward over the blue buff wall did kind of reveal Guts' location. And once again, everybody does kind of subside, look for the resets and... Glancing down at this basics. gold, two things jump out at me. 600, uh, 800 gold top lane or so, yep. but also bot lane. Very interesting distribution, but it looks like Legacy have a slight gold advantage there. And that's a weird lane, and I'm not yeah. sure what that me really means, it's but... It's difficult to judge on a one-to-one -one scale, right? Because it's the Tarek farming up until he gets the quest pop, and then it does start going over towards the Sona. And they have been bullied very early. It started with the double W start. They catch them in the river, get that very nice trade. But this is an interesting Sona. King has paid the price of his unsealed spellbook because he wants to be able to live through some of the early ganks that probably should be coming his way with a Nocturne and later game have the barrier and exhaust and heal all of those defensive summoners available. So normally you look at it and it's like, oh, okay, Sona is behind, yes, but she has the Klepto gold to, to bolster her income. That's not going to be the case here. He's not double dipping into the gold earnings, just only the support item here. So Legacy definitely with an advantage so far, but haven't really found a way to be able to utilize that right now. This could be the option though, complete map flip and... They have the tempo, the bottom lane already in the Rift Herald pit, whereas King of Destiny is still about 20 seconds away. Yeah, this Herald is obviously an objective that is the only one on the map, so Legacy have rotated for it. Looks like they're playing the neutral objective game this game. Not focusing on ganks and pressure there, they're focusing on these neutrals. Mammoth are trying to react, they have no vision. There are four of them here, and above is Aurelia. Okay. Numbers-wise, is a 5v5. Oh. All goes down, they're going on top of Fudge. He's caught out, all goes down, but it's not enough. He's dead, Fudge gets caught out the wrong side of the fight. Yeah, walks the wrong way, and the immediate collapse there from Legacy. But Mammoth, they actually looking for a cheeky steal here. Smite does not quite get it. Guts picks it up, so Legacy, big win. They get the top laner. That first Nocturne ult we spoke about, they yep. pick up Fudge for it, who's been ahead the whole game and they still get the Herald. Yeah, and they are actually just channeling the Herald immediately. Top lane a dead fudge, no TP to get himself up there. So this is going to be a crash. 12 minutes on the clock, so plating still alive. You can see the Mammoth team rotating up, but no, they've abandoned it. They realize this turret is not long for the world. They're looking mid for this Camille, maybe trying to get a pick here, but they're wandering Half around. Rise. Half Rise flashes the wall and gets away as well. So they tried to make a pick there, didn't work, but top lane, this could be first turret. Yeah, opportunistic there. You mentioned it. They were walking towards top. They wanted the defense and found a pap prize, but Flash is going to get him to safety. Shelly did a lot of work on the turret. Unsure if it will fall down. Minions may be, be enough. Close. They're clearing out the minions uh, very quickly. Looks like it will... 
Oh, yeah, it does fall. First turret. That's big. So Legacy here, taking a gold lead in this game for the first time. They've played amazing macro, even if the, the lanes haven't been going the way they wanted them to go. And this was kind of a 10 or a 5v5, a 10 man on your screen team fight brewing around the Rift Herald. That's not something you're used to seeing for a very long time, but uh, super important on the current patch and a lot of teams are contesting. Used to be the case where Rift Herald was just like a free objective. If you get towards it and you can solo it out, then yes, take it. But it is a big time sink. And unfortunately for Mammoth, they approach from two different directions. If you can land all the way and then Fudge is like at the pit as you're flanking from both sides, then yes, that team fight could have gone their way. But Legacy, they had the vision, it's guts popping the ulti, immediately turns around and it isn't going to be the 5v5. It's just going to be the five versus one. Fudge dies incredibly quickly. Uh, pick up the Rift Herald, bash it into a turret. That's a gold lead now for Legacy. Absolutely. That that pincer mover there looks great when you pull it off, but with the Nocturne ult, you can deny that very well if you can spot it out. So might see less of that this game. They might have learned their lesson. Fudge going, okay, guys, let's just group up before we go in. If yeah. Nocturne ult's into Fudge and he's in the middle of the team, he dies instantly. So we'll see how they... We'll watch Mammoth in the next team fight. We'll see how they adapt after that one went that way, and we'll see if they... Uh, Fight it a different way, because yeah. that's one fight, that's one kill. The goal is, like, yeah, they've got a lead, but it's still under a 1,000. Mm -hmm. Next Dragon is going to spawn a Mammoth kind of in the area. Legacy posturing around, but you do raise a very good point. Nocturne ulti in this game, yes, very impactful, but even in the current meta as a whole, when you do have bruises kind of everywhere, you have, like, 1-3-1 comps versus 1-3-1 comps, and TPs are super impactful. If Legacy can be the proactive ones this game, and they get the engages, and that's a solid four, five seconds of darkness, and you just cannot TP to the play. You can't see the wards, you can't see the minions, and there's no ability for triple or fudge if they're not already at the fight to kind of join the other side of the map. So, yep. Legacy, once again, they are being proactive. This is an engage. Stun does oh, land. Oh, on this one. In fact, Crazy Ooh. caught out under the turret. Rex side there for the knock-up, and he gets taken out. Yeah, wanted the demolish proc there. Just a little bit of greed. Triple is into the backside, though. Oh, but he gets caught by Camille. Flash goes down onto Predator. They're looking to pick him up. Comes forward. In fact, Triple's in a lot of trouble here, but the knock-up goes down by Chaz, forcing him away. Lots of CC, a lot of invulnerability going down. That turret ult oh. doing a ton of work. They go on the turret. Darkness comes down, but it seems like a little bit too late as the Legacy lineup are dying under this turret. Triple's going to fall to the turret as well. Papyrus lives somehow. Can he make something happen? No, he can't. Yeah. He goes down. That's a three for one. Akali gets hella value out of the shroud, but Mammoth, everybody piling in. Triple somehow gets to hold on to his ultimate, and that's going to be the turret dead on the other side. Punishes really are the name of this game right now. It's Fudge on the top side. He gets caught off. Crazy starts this one off with a botched demolish proc, and just look at Triple. CC, but holds his car, his call this entire time. Terracolti comes through, and then this stun from Fudge. Ulti into the double man stun onto double carries, and they just commit straight through the turret. Yes, they lose one, uh, tanking the turret up at the end of this fight, but big swing point there for Mammoth. Gold lead much more equalized after this one, and... Yep, so the dragon was taken away by Mammoth after that fight. You can see it up in the top there. So that was two very different fights we saw just then. One of them, Legacy, were proactive, especially with the Darkness. That second one right there, they get caught out and they don't react well at all. Darkness, way too late. Players going in when they should have been pulling back. You saw the Camille altered forward there when really no business had to go back. Well, so we'll see how Legacy can keep going in this game. It was proactive, right? They were trying to extend their lead. Crazy was like, if I hit this turret with a demolish proc, that's dead. We've broken both yeah. side lanes and then we can flip the map. We start setting up the 1 3 1. We have long lanes for a Nocturne to attack with the side laners of a Camille and an Akali, right? That is the thought process behind that play. But a single pick and Mammoth just immediately with the collapse. Big points to note there is that the mid laners didn't burn their TP. So Triple and Chaz still have access to the summoners if they want them. But yep. you can see both of these guys kind of deploying into a similar sort of setup here. Legacy lying in wait, looking for an opportunity to arise. So it's going to be a 3v3 if it happens, but Crace is going to rotate around. They're content with just waiting for now. This is all about positioning around the map. Objective-wise, there's nothing up, so it's all turrets right now. Mid turret is the best one to get, obviously, but you know, you really don't get a choice sometimes. Yeah, it's hard to just walk at a mid turret. Um, the enemies probably have to be trolling to just stand underneath that one and give it to you. So you can see both of these guys do exactly the same thing. Mammoth, they walk topside, place a bunch of vision and threaten Pap Rise, and Legacy respond in oh, exactly the same right way. Up they river. They're looking for Akali here. You can see up the top line here, Akali backing out. Look like um, Fudge was trying to make a play there. Nope. Gonna respect it. And once again, 
the response is exactly the same thing on the other side of the map. Not the sure if it's caught the out, wave I think, is no. there. Yeah, I think the wave will be dying very shortly. So it's actually just going to be a Raptor take by Praedith. Let's give Mammoth a little bit of extra time in the mid lane, but struggling to make fights happen. Everybody just kind of uh, playing the ebb and flow of League of Legends, the give and take of vision on opposite sides of the map. And all things ending up fairly equal. We are starting to get towards the first item spikes. It's now the Aurelia with the Triforce. This has Oludens, but Sona hasn't quite hit the mark there, as does the Camille. Obviously goes for the Tiamat um, very early, so Triforce a little bit away. Absolutely. We'll see how these things play out. Rek'Sai building a lot of damage. Back in the old days, you see a lot of tank Rek'Sai, but now we've got the VF Sword coming yeah. out. More of an assassin-ish kind of player. Still well, CC as well. It's just like the new ulti, right? Like, you get to go to yeah. the Conqueror, you get to go into a GA, builds out of the BF Sword, you take the stopwatch and stuff like that. So he does a lot of damage from very early on in the game, and you buy a lot of time. You have the invulnerabil uh, invulnerability when you jump onto the enemy, then you can go into stasis after that. And If you take a look at Legacy's comp, if they're left dealing with a Rek'Sai in their back line, then King is safe, Triple is safe, Fudge oh. is safe, and... Here's the rotate, actually. Paparai's respecting it yesterday. Oh, wow. Oh, did he go for that? Oh, that's actually a very smart play there. That's clever. Try that, that one. Out. the Gromp and. The Bip's like, I don't want this. Oh, that's actually genius. Because I believe the Gromp would walk that tiny little bit extra out of the bush and, and would have showed in Fudge's vi uh, Paparai's vision, rather. We have God View, so. Someone exactly test that where for us. I want to know what it looks like if there is no one in that brush and see if yeah. you can tell. And I think it would have walked all the way out, and because it didn't, he's like, yes, okay. I had the inkling that they were diving, that confirms it, so concedes the turret. As you can see, Legacy got theirs on the bottom side earlier, so a little bit ahead of tempo here. The guys on the blue side, and I mentioned blue side. Blue side has a hell of win rate at the moment. Every yeah. single game today was a blue side victory, I believe all four yesterday, so... Well, we'll see if our uh, Legacy Good can omen. continue that trend. As we move on into the, the latest start part of the early game here, both mid turrets are still up, but the, all the other outers are down. So uh, next objective in a minute is uh, it's Cloud Drake. So you don't imagine teams are going to fight too hard over it, whereas it could be a uh, a nice big inferno or something. You imagine yeah. they shot for that one. I mean, you get a big boy Baron spawning in 30 or 20 rather. Pretty, so. It's a bit early for that though, I think. Yeah, but it does become like the focal point of the map, right? Yeah. Like as soon as you hit that 20 minute mark, the game does just change. Yes, they've been in a 1-3-1 setup for quite a while, maybe the last eight minutes or so, but it means that you cannot commit multiple people bot side. The fear of punishment towards the pit is definitely something that changes your perspective here. And Air Dragon is not really something that you realistically care about. Ocean Dragons are split a piece, so it's not like one team has like supremacy over the dragons this game. They're just yeah. stacking them up and they want to build towards a big elder. It's really kind of uh, nothing down there. Guts maybe looking for something bottom side, but that oh. is a TP. Right, the TP is a Nocturne coming as well. They're looking to follow this one up. All comes out. One dead oh. Aurelia already, but the follow up already. Guts is going to get flashed on. He's dead. There is Praetor. There is Guts and Chaz here. That's two for one. Yeah, Mammoth, they start this one off. The TP comes through early, but Legacy, they have the response. The answer there from the other side of the map, Praedith actually TPs down there, so they don't lose Ooh. all that much in terms of side lane pressure, but this is... That was dangerous. Dangerous. He's about to walk yeah. through that brush, and I was mm -hmm. expecting a crescendo and follow-up damage, but no, avoids it. Legacy actually got a nice, nice fight there. Yeah, 100%. They burn Nocturne ulti and an AD carry TP. As the game gets later and later, you care so much less about the AD carry TP versus the side laners, so somewhat get away with murder. The push was there by Paprise, ultimately like a baiting fudge to go in for that fight, right? Like yeah. the TP ward was there, prepped by Mammoth, but the response was uh, very timely from Legacy, able to turn that one around, a two for one trade. Fairly low kill game between the two, and still less than a thousand gold is the lead between these two guys, so. Yeah, I must say though, looking at these teams, a low kill games, the way Legacy been playing, feels good for them because they've been playing very smart around the map in their wins. When they rotate, they rotate well. Now, if they can do, pull something like that off against Mammoth, you kind of look at this team and go, wow, if they can clear up their early game and not go into disaster pits, mm -hmm. then they might be able to pull some real big upsets this split off. Yeah, and uh, this is that game, right? Early game went well. We did just take a look at the gold and during the laning phase, it's very rough to judge between a bottom lane of the Sona Tarek, but as you kind of trend on later, yes, a thousand is the difference between the supports, but that's 3k in the hands of Praetor. Out of all of the players on this Legacy lineup, you even take a look at last split. He was a very strong performer, as he's actually going to ulti that one away. Yeah, double ulti coming down there. One for one trade for and Praetor. Yeah, but this is a big su success story, I think, in terms of role swaps. Top laner to AD carry. First year in that one, and 
Looking the goods this game, approaching his third item. Finish the two already, rapid fire cannon to boot. Has been sitting on that executioner's calling. Makes a lot of sense, right? You're against the Sona, you're against the Tarek. So much healing all over the place, so... It's kind of primed for big team fights here. The strong, consistent damage here for Legacy. Yeah. Praetus, when we first started the year, when he saw his AD carry game, it looked sketchy. He did not look confident at all. But this game, I mean, not just this game, but even this split and even the later half of last split, he's looked comfortable on the roll. You see Guts Ooh. here getting caught out by Triple. This is a problem here. CC. Oh, wow. Wow, the Lissandra all got CC'd. It's not going to be enough, though. Destiny's yeah. going to finish him off. Very nice use of the spell shield from Guts, but unfortunately, that's Whoa. the flash done from Destiny. This is a re-engage, though. Look at re-engage. It's 2v4, Ooh. though. They're under turret. Can they make it happen? It's Praetor and Crazy. He comes from the backside. Fudge flying in. There's five mid. Legacy are not that here. Rise. TP coming in as well. This is a 5v4 right now. Can Legacy turn this one around? The longer this goes, you got to imagine the worse it is for them as King heals up the team. Both disengage. Yeah, everybody piles in from the side lanes, and Mammoth kind of get everything out of their opponents. No TP for Chaz, no TP for Papryz, and they walk away with the pick. Very nicely played there, and makes the next kind of passage of play much easier to navigate. You can see if the engage doesn't quite land from Legacy, it really is like the one-two punch, and it has to be. When Crazy doesn't get multiple members in the CC, when you don't have a Nocturne on the map to be able to turn Ooh. this one around. Chaz. Uh, hold that. No, he does not want that. He, he, he realizes where yeah. Fudge is in this game right now. Fudge is looking very strong. It's also, his team just had already reset off the map. He didn't quite know where Mammoth were, so that fight would have probably been a, about a five-seconder, and that, that is enough for a rotation from mid lane. Didn't want to hard commit to that one, and just goes back to the wave. This is going to be the blue buff picked up for the Aurelia. Yeah, so we're, we're still waiting for that big decisive fight this game. Right now, Yes, Mammoth got the pick last fight, and they take a few hundred gold off that one. But we haven't seen that big fight yet that's really pushed the team ahead. Yeah, but now it's, it's Mammoth's time to shine. That last fight, yes, they win. They get a single kill. But now that they have TP advantage anywhere they want it, this is their like leverage to push this game further. Both of these guys have been struggling to break the mid-outers. They're still standing here at about 25 minutes. Nobody has even touched a Baron, but given that side lanes are definitely going to be in their favor right now, uh, it's kind of their time to be able to set up the Baron, to be able to look for these flank plays and get the fight that they do want. They used next to nothing, and you can see Guts just hovering the Camille on the side lane. Fudge sort of knows what's up, sitting underneath this turret, even when the wave is pushing out. Uh, definitely prime target right now and playing respectfully. Absolutely. So, Mammoth here moving to the top side. This is the Vision Wars. We've been seeing this all day. Once the Baron becomes an objective, then that is now this is all about controlling vision over this area. A lot of the time, if you're on the red side, you can't get shut out if you don't get into this river position. But blue always has nice clean paths in. Yeah. Probably have about two minutes to play with Do Legacy if they want to stick around in this setup, given the top side is now being pushed in. Mammoth fixed their wave up there in the wards. Will time out around the Baron Pit eventually. I like what Legacy has placed down. They're in kind of obscure places, and the double pinks of Mammoth haven't been able to pick them up so far, but... As time kind of trickles onwards, sweeper cooldowns start getting refreshed and they rotate all around the river. They will be spotted out eventually. That one is getting lots of value right now. They know they're not starting anything up, but this is the next phase from Mammoth. They are pushing in that little bit deeper. They push in top wave, they walk into the jungle. They have these flank wards now available. Triple can get behind you and that's the scariest place for a list to be, as with the Aurelia. Ooh, that that caught out, and he knows he is as well. Oh. He's jumped on. He's going to fall down. That's a quick pick, and now Mammoth have complete priority over this river. Yeah, perfectly timed for Mammoth. They just barely get around the corner, and Akali face checks. CC layered after CC, and no ability to hop into the Shroud. Legacy, they know what's going on right now. They know that the ward just died, actually, do Mammoth, so... So this, this is, chewing. they're out of vision, but they know it's happening. So Legacy are rotating up. You can see in the four of them here coming up, but Fudge is Where's still on the, the bot TP? side. There it is. He hasn't got a TP here. He comes in now. He's coming uh, behind them in the, he's in the, in the wolf Watch pit. Triple. He's going to go he behind. Oh my God, he's in. This is a big fight here. This could be disaster for Legacy as Fudge comes from the backside. Ult's come out, but it might be too little too late. Fudge goes forward. Fudge is taken out. Legacy get one. Can they get out with their lives? They've stopped the Baron. There's one. There goes the uh, AD carry. Crazy looking to get out as well. They're under the turret. They get two. They're going to turn around now, potentially the Baron. That is perfect Baron execution from Mammoth. They get the initial pick, they reel Legacy in, and the flanks were there. Fudge gets into the backside. They didn't get enough, you would say. They could have got more off that fight. Unfortunately, two picks is it at the end of the oh, day. Oh no, Papryze just spawns, and he's already in a lot of trouble. 
stuck under the turret. He's swapping Shroud down. He's going to try and stay alive as long as he can. This turret is not long for the world. It's going to go down. Papra is actually looking to escape here. He's going to lead him on a merry chase across the map. And then back oh. to, wow, dodges the Prey Seeker. But I don't know how he gets out of this one. They're catching yeah. him slowly. Running away from a Sona is a very tough ask here, and Paparaz will eventually die. This is just staggering the respawns here from Legacy. So they, yes, they didn't have Paparaz initially, then their bottom lane dies, and now as they have respawned, Paparaz dies once again. Certainly being picked on this game. You can see lots of pings going towards the Infernal Dragon. Legacy trying to steal this one away, but... Mammoth are rolling in here. In. Mammoth will beat them to the punch here. Four Mammoth members coming. Just triple missing. It looks like that initial start there by Chaz is just going to be a leash for the Mammoth team. Yeah, and the scariest thing is, if you take a broader picture of the, the fights that have been happening in the last 10 minutes, every single time Mammoth, they win. They win a little bit, but they don't use that much. This time, a single TP is the starting point. Triple gets in, multi-man stun, and they're already layering the Tarek over the top. I'm surprised with how many members of Legacy actually lived off the back end. It's the paranoia kind of being a little bit annoying there for the chase. Stun does ultimately come out here from Destiny to lock down Desire, but you would have liked for Mammoth with that setup. They, they did all of the right things. They deny the vision, they get the pick, they get the flank, and you wanted the Baron. But as I was saying, the scariest thing now is that they can just do it all again. They still have Triple's TP. All of a sudden, Fudge can be topside and, and he can float to the play and they can use Triple to flank. But interestingly, they're actually going for the opposite play here. He's going topside. Fudge is answering bottom. Yep, no TP on Fudge. Start it up soon. Maybe the thing that I would say, though, is that right now, there's not much of a chance here that Legacy going to be able to start this Baron. Oh, no. So for them sending him bot lane, it's basically saying, you know what, sure, maybe we can't really start Baron right now. We don't want to do a 4v5, but you can't start it. So this is just free CS. We're going to keep letting Fudge scale because he's starting to get real big in this game. And if that continues, then they're just going to slow burn Legacy out of this game. I mean, yes, somewhat. But if you like, do have this advantage right now, like TP advantage doesn't last forever. And the cooldowns out are now up and available there for um, Legacy. But it's like Mammoth... They, like, they have the lead. They just won the fight. They could have looked for the Baron, and they are in this position to keep progressing the game further. But if they deploy Fudge bottom side, they have TP disadvantage, even when Legacy are behind. So this is just going to be the five-man start, maybe just wanting to straight-up 5v5 team fight. Yep. Camille has got teleport. Camille is bot lane. Rest of Legacy here. It's five of them strong. Baron is on the half. Here they come now. Vision going down. They see where it's at. So here come Legacy. TP, TP behind them. Mammoth have slowed down the damage on the Baron. They're okay. going in. Paparaz on the back side. He's going to get picked up very quickly, but they ignore him. They go for the oh. front side. Oh my god, a big dive from the front there. Zongius goes down. He survives. Mammoth are going to pick up two. They're going to look for Paparaz. They're going to pick up the third one. They're going to turn back on that Baron, and now this is going to be hard to stop. Yeah, the CC layering is just way too much. They find the initial pick. Crazy still has Flash and Ulti available on the Rakan, and he falls down without value. Mammoth, the five-man stack. Absolutely the dream here. The TP comes through, but Legacy absolutely no contest. That is Baron for Mammoth. Now they have taken complete control of this game. The next few minutes are going to be pivotal for Legacy as we watch this one again. Yeah, we'll see which one started this up. It's actually triple against the W onto the Rakan. Then everybody layers over the top. And you can see Braideth and Chaz. They're just not in the fight at all. No auto attacks, no abilities flying anywhere. Immediately bop over the wall and say nope to that one and we talked about it earlier legacy they have to be the proactive ones it has to be them finding the engage and every single time mammoth finds a pick it really does just all fall apart absolutely now we're going to watch mammoth they have oh, got the split chaz. pusher and fudge chaz oh he's caught out he's getting cc'd up fudge is going to look for him flash over the wall they want him can he escape somehow? Is he no man's land? Four members are rotating up for him. In fact, all five are. Asuna comes from the backside as well. Mammoth want to shut him down. If they take him, they're going to be able to push down the lane. It's five, and it's not much legacy he can do. Yeah, quick trip into the wardrobe. Ends up in Narnia and finds oh, absolutely nothing. Oh, they're still going. Nothing. They get two. Where were you? What were you doing there, Praetor? He's caught out as well. Yeah, this is 50 seconds on the clock. The respawns are just so far away. Mammoth have a wave, and... They're actually being proxied by a couple of minions. No, okay, minimap lying to me, but they're just gonna tank this one straight through. So much sustain, so many shields. They might just walk this one to the Nexus. Absolutely, there's only two minions there, but that's all they need. They can tank it themselves if they need to. The minions are taken out though. Now, okay, this might not be as easy a kill as you think it is though. They will get the inhibitor, but they are okay. gonna back out. They had no minions to be able to push any further, and yes, they can tank it up, but without the minions, that turret has way too much armor to take down quickly. 
Yeah, so they do just back away, looking for the next inner ring. 50 seconds on the Infernal is a big point to make as well. Yeah. If they do want to play it very slow, but you can see spawns aren't up yet for Legacy. Two members still down, five versus three, and this turret will be conceded. And we'll they may down. just look to continue. They have their ultis back available except for Fudge, but... There's two cannons there. There's a lot of siege potential here. In fact, that first tower is going down below half, and Legacy making no attempt. Half price, half price around the back. Nice. They're looking for a fight here, oh. but they get turned on. He's almost caught here. I'm not sure if he is. In fact, he's run away. That inhibitor has gone down, and Mammoth are going to retreat. Yeah, now he's stuck between Mammoth and Mammoth's base, though. Stuck on the wrong side of the map, Babip. But to hit him with the ulti there, and uh, half price. It's got trouble. the wall. Once again, Papyrus leading him on a chase. We've seen this a few times this game. I don't know if he's going to be able to get out of it, though. Put his shroud down. His team are not rotating at all. I think Zaya yeah. and Rakan are looking for the dragon, actually. That's what seems to be the play there, the trade. A little bit of uh, miscommunication, possibly, as uh, he gets behind the team. We'll Mammoth aren't backing. Line. They're going yeah. in. They're going for the front side here. Legacy made a mistake here. They're going to take this dragon, but Mammoth are just entering their base right now. They've got big cannon minions coming in. One cannon and super minions from the Baron buff coming in. This first turret, it's going to fall down. Legacy finally hit the base, but one turret's already dead. That's a big misstep for Legacy. Yeah, certainly is. Last Nexus, Nexus turret, there they go. They're going in now. Nocturne looking to pick off the uh, Aurelia, it looks like, down there. Zonya's coming down. Guts is Aurelia, uh, Zonya's under his own turret. He's going to fall immediately as he pops out of that one. This last turret is falling. This is going to be it. Mammoth, they've turned this one right around. Looks like a very close game from the start, but they've pulled it away. That's all, both turrets down. All that's left is the Nexus. They're going to sit around here for a little bit and just farm up a bit of that CS. But Mammoth... The, they were the undefeated team coming to this game, and that is going to continue now as they clean up the remnants of this Legacy lineup and take the Nexus for their fourth win of Split 2 of the OPL. Yeah, are able to turn this one around early game in the favor of Legacy, but as soon as they get a couple of flights, the flanks start coming through. Team fight after team fight, Baron buff is going to be the end of the card there, and last ditch effort for Legacy. Fortunately, they had to fight something under the Nexus. They looked to steal away in Infernal, but the punish immediately there from Mammoth. Absolutely. This team is a force to be reckoned with. Mm -hmm. Right now we're saying there's a lot of back and forth. There's a lot of what we call upsets in the league. There are a lot of teams that look like they can go all the way, but this is the team to beat right now. They've already faced some of the strongest competition in this league, and I'm not sure who can topple them. Yeah, certainly the case. They look pretty versatile as well. That's now a Sona Tarek to add to the mix. Yeah. Uh, big one in the meta right now. We have been seeing a bunch of bands there, but... Yeah, that was just a turnaround performance. Once they had the lead, it never really looked like Mammoth were relenting. Yes, it yeah. was just it was just how much they were taking every time they got an advantage. It did start small, started with like a single pick. Then next time around, the fight is like two picks. And do we look at Baron? No, we'll play it a little bit slow. Uh, so yeah, they had the comp to get there. They had the Sonotari to get into the late game. Once they landed, completely took over. Absolutely. And, and that's the thing I've been looking at a lot this weekend is teams that get those early leads and being able to close the game out cleanly without potentially, you know, giving other team ways back into it. Once, I think that first uh, that first fight in mid lane where they went out to that six kills, from there it felt like there wasn't really a way back into the game for Legacy that we saw. Well, yeah, I feel like the turning point was bottom side when Crazy got caught. That was their yeah. last proactive maneuver. They're like, okay, like we have a little bit of a lead, we're making With things the work. One, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes for a demolish proc, gets picked on, and Mammoth win that fight. Mm. And Legacy, from then on out, every fight was Mammoth finding a pick. It wasn't Legacy getting the Rakan, the Camille, the Nocturne, like layer upon layer. I've said it so many times, but it was it was integral to their comp being successful when they weren't the ones with the ability to actually go forward. It just looked like Mammoth. They're just walking around, getting flank wards, Sona, Rolti, Tarek's done. They have just CC out their ass, for lack of a better term, and that was the game. <laughs> That was the game. Well, th you know what? That game is maybe a bit hungry, so I'm up for some dessert. Let's send it over to our chefs who are going to prepare us a nice meal. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, for lack of a better term. The ass. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Mammoth continuing the dream run, Jake. Are they? Ah, <laughs> oh, we're talking about League of Legends this evening. You are yeah, getting absolutely. so angry about the mess again. Uh, yeah, no, Mammoth have uh, been exceptional mm. this split so far. Absolutely. I think, you know... Uh, that game versus the Chiefs really was a rough early game, but this time around, I mean, they were mentioning it. So no Tarek, it's so hard to track when you're ahead, when you're behind. I think they did a really good job of negating kind of the dive potential that was going to come out in that game. Uh, they were able to scale up, you know, after even a rough level one. And as soon as that team comp gets into like two item mm. territory, you just make Aurelia super Aurelia, <laughs> unkillable Aurelia, and then Aurelia infinite healing, infinite shields. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then you just go Aurelia kill, and then Fudge <laughs> went and killed. There that you go. Great. That's all you need to know. Well, congratulations to Mammoth. 
uh, may you forever kill. Uh, we'll be back after this commercial. with a big use of cooldowns. Yep, it's gonna be a level here. six to level five though. That guy's in trouble. Badge, oh wow, he has to flash over the wall here. Fudge going to turn. He's into the backside though. Oh, but he gets caught by Camille. Flash goes down onto Praetor, so looking to pick him up. Comes forward, in fact, Cripple's in a lot of trouble here. But it's knocked up, goes down by Chaz, forcing him away. Lots of CC, a lot of invulnerability going down. That Tarek also oh. doing a ton of work. They're going on the turret, dying them in the rev, and he's in the wolf pit. Triple. He's gonna go he behind. Oh it. my god, he's in. This is a big fight here. This could be disaster for Legacy as Fudge comes from the backside. Ults come out, but it might be too little, too late. Fudge goes forward. Fudge is taken out. Legacy get one. Can they get out with their life? They've stopped the Baron. There's one. There goes the uh, 80 carry. Crazy looking to get out as well. They're Mammoth have slowed down the damage from the Baron. Okay. They're going in. Paparaz on the back side. He's going to get picked up very quickly, but they ignore him. They go for the oh. front side. Oh my god, a big dive from the front there. Zongius goes down. He survives. Mammoth are going to pick up two. They're going to look for Paparaz. They're going to pick up. At Macca's, our burgers are now hotter, juicier, and tastier. With onions added at the grill for more flavor, perfectly melted cheese, and softer buns. They're the best Macca's burgers ever. Time to shine, baby. Well. Welcome back to the LCS. Uh, it is your 